I'm here with Victor Cole. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Pretty well, actually. No complaints on my part. <laughs> nice. Um, I'm going to start off by asking who is Victor Cole and what pushed you into getting into this field, as well as what pushed you towards working for Ashton College? Well, um, Victor Cole is uh, a mechanic that uh, actually had a career change in the last two years and became a teacher. So I work, I, not only do I work at Ashton College, um, helping people to get their certification for their uh, CFQ, which is Certificate of Qualification for their uh, license, I also work with kids. Um, I work in a high school full time and um, it's probably the best move I ever made, but um, I couldn't have done it without, the, without uh, my initial step, which was being a, getting a certified, being a certified mechanic. Right. That's 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 what brought me here. Right. I have uh, 25 years under my belt as um, automotive service technician and um, I want to share my knowledge with everybody and, uh, you know, hope uh, hope I could help people. For the last 25 years, I've been helping myself. So it's time for me to give back. Definitely. Is there any correlation that you have between um, teaching at the high school and bringing that towards your teaching skills at Ashton? Absolutely. Um, when, when, uh, it doesn't matter who, um, who you're teaching, um, the whole point is, is to engage the learner. So at the end of the day, whether you're 15 or 55, um, I have to engage you. I have to make you understand. So teaching is teaching. Like it, there's a correlation. It doesn't, and it doesn't matter what you're teaching. If you're teaching math, science, mechanics, plumbing, electrical, it's, it's all the same. At the end of the day, you have to engage the learner and uh, you have to do the best that you can for them to comprehend it. And um, you have to be able to troubleshoot. Uh, you know, is this person um, retaining knowledge? Um, do I have to spend a little bit more time? And above all, you have to encourage. And that, that, there's no age beside that. Um, you have to encourage. Like you have to, you know, instead of you have the wrong answer, um, maybe I'm going to encourage you to look at these videos and um, tell me what you think and then have a discussion with me about it, so, right? So touching base on you saying um, you want to, or you need to encourage people when they may or may not be getting things right. Um, what do you do when somebody seems to not understand something? What is, how, how do you focus on them and make sure that they can retain everything that you're teaching? So as an, as an instructor, um, in my course, especially with the, at the college level, um, what I do, I do one thing. I do three things, and students don't even realize I'm doing it. I'm checking to see what they know already. I check to see how they retain the information. And then I'm training them for the end goal, which is to write 125 of a question multiple choice exam in one hour. And I'm doing that, and I'm doing this week in, week out. Um, usually when people are done with that course that I, uh, that I teach, uh, not only are they better techs, but they get their license. All right, I, uh, I promote critical thinking. I promote self-confidence through, um, through promoting success in my students. And once again, there's no age for, uh, for something like that. Yeah, people need self-confidence at the age of 10 as they do at the age of 60. So it doesn't matter. Definitely. So aside from an auto automotive service technician, when doing your course, is there anything else that somebody can kind of divert into? Um, you know what? As far as a trade goes, that would be a question more relevant to like, can an automotive service type, if you know how to use tools in a trade, you would, um, you know how to, you would know how to do just about anything. All right. Because at the end of the day, if you know how to use a drill, you know how to use a drill. So that means that you'll be able to use it for whatever use you see applicable. As far as, um, as, far as my course for as an automotive service technician, if you don't have any knowledge of vehicles, right, um, my course would be a crash course of a wealth of knowledge for you. All right. So even if you're not writing the, uh, even if you're not writing your uh, 310S uh, certification and you just want to, you just want knowledge on uh, of vehicles, um, you're welcome. You come, come right in and uh, 
this course this course would be a crash course of knowledge. Uh, I follow Ashton College's uh, curriculum on it, and uh, we're uh, we're up to date on everything that's out there. So uh, from the person that's a first first time car buyer to a person that just came to Canada that doesn't know how how it works to purchase a vehicle, and you really don't have anyone here that can help you with that, to the person that wants to get their exam. Uh, the, the, the license, uh, their mechanics license and wants to pass the exam. I coach them all, all right, on this. So it's open for everyone. Okay, so piggybacking off that question, if somebody has successfully completed their, their, um, their course and their exam in this trade, is there any way for them to move to another country, say the States and kind of pursue things from there? Well, you know what? I, I love it when people ask me that because um, in the U.S., all right, they, uh, they, look, at, they look at the Red Seal trade, at a, at a Red Seal on any trades license, and uh, they compensate you for it. Oh, awesome. All right. So it's, 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 it's from employer to employer, right, because it's not actually recognized by the government. But when an employer sees, wait a second, you're a licensed mechanic in Canada, and you want to work, no problem, we'll hire you. Oh, wait a second, you're a licensed electrician in Canada, no problem, we'll hire you. In construction, codes are, the, codes are, the code is almost identical as in automotive. Well, guess what? Um, automotive, it's even better because if you learn how to fix a car in Canada, you could then, why, why, why the States? Why not go somewhere hot? Um, we could go somewhere in South America and repair vehicles, Definitely. right? Like at the end of the day, a car is a car. Is that right? something you kind of mentioned to your students that there is like an um, abundance of opportunities for you once you get into this field? Oh, yeah, and there's a huge shortage, by the way. So it's uh, if you know what you're doing, um, this this would be like this is a workers' market. If you know what you're doing, um, just so that just so that people can have an understanding, my best year as an apprentice was forty-one thousand dollars a year. That was my best year as an apprentice. Yeah. My best year as a licensed technician was $210,000. All right, not to say you're gonna go out and make $200,000, hold on one second. I kept <laughs> educating myself, I'm a lifelong learner. All right, it depends, that depends on you. But my worst year as a licensed technician was $65,000 a year. Still pretty sustainable. Yeah. All right, and at the end of the day, we work to sustain our life. Like we, we all have bills and, uh, you know, and we all, we all wanna get ahead and we all wanna put clothes on our kids' backs and, and, uh, and on our own backs and put food on the table. So it, it is a great living. And like I said, there's a, there's a shortage. You will not be out of work. So you mentioned um, your apprenticeship. Do you remember anything that kind of stuck with you? Something, we'll start with something positive, move on to something negative and how it kind of shaped you as an individual and then soon an educator? Well, so I was scared when I went to go write my uh, license at first. And um, I did all three, I did all three levels at the, the, at the community college, right? And I was eligible to write. So I approached a gentleman that I knew that, that's, that at the time is in the same position that I am in today. He uh, transitioned from a mechanic to an educator. And I went to him, his name was Charlie. And I said, hey, Charlie, you think you could coach me on, um, you know, on how to get through this exam? Because, you know, Charlie said, well, yeah, of course, you could take my class. And I'm like, okay. And uh, Charlie asked me for money to take his class like everybody else, because at the end of the day, he's providing a service. I was, uh, I paid Charlie with money I didn't, uh, I didn't have after he gave me some choice words about the way that I think about things. So I really can't say these choice words today in this interview, but I can, I, I can tell you this, that he told me that I have to look at the big picture of what I'm doing and understand that when you invest in education for in education, you're investing in yourself. You're not investing in the college, you're investing in you. And at the end of the day, any, any money spent on education will never be a waste of money. And I dare someone to come to me and tell me that it's a waste of money to go and, and, get, uh, and, get, and get coaching to take, it, to take a test that could possibly change your life, okay, if you pass it. I dare someone to tell me that. 
Definitely. There's a lot of passion that needs to have, that you need to have in order to succeed in any field, really. But Absolutely. So in any trade, you definitely need some kind of care and, and passion for the, for the job. Yeah. Um, can you walk me through a day in, in, in the field? Swim, a day in, and uh, when you wake up and get a, grab a cup of coffee to putting on your PJs that night. All right. So you, you guys, you, everyone's going to think I'm crazy. I wake up at 4 a.m. and I work out. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah, there you go. I, there, I'm crazy. Okay. We got, got, got that out of the system, but, um, you, you leave your, you leave your home for about, uh, 7 AM, get to work for about 7 30. Right. Because, uh, because it's a worker's market, maybe you could even find something closer to home. At one point in time, uh, I had a three minute drive to work, three minute, not 30 minute, three minute drive to work. Okay. So, um, and yes, I used to walk when it was nice outside. All right. Okay. So, question. sorry. That was going to be a follow-up question. <laughs> yeah. I used to walk when I, when it was uh, nice outside. So, um, with it being a worker's market, you can, you can go work at the, at the, at the garage at the corner. So you go to work and, uh, you would see what the, you would see what's on the board for the day, right? You'd bring in the first your your first vehicle and, um, that's it. You would just, you would do what you, uh, what you were, what you're told to do. All right. If you're in a supervisory position, which you will never get without a license, <laughs> <laughs> by the way. <laughs> All right. Just so that everybody can understand. And you don't want to be the guy at the front desk. I mean, supervisory position like shop foreman or something like that, where, where it's real money. The guy at the front desk, they're, they're, a, they're it's a paid sales guy, right? So, and uh, usually the owners do that type of work. But if you're, uh, if you're in a supervisory position as shop foreman, let's say, which I was, not only did I have an apprentice to train, all right, most, most of the time, because what would happen is I would get the apprentice, I would train him, and then I would get to keep him for a little while so that uh, he, would do, he would do the bulk of my work for me so that he would learn. Not only, not only do you get uh, perks like that, you also get to pick the jobs you want most of the time. And you get a percentage of the performance of the shop. Well, I did anyways, every time I, I, I did that job at three, uh, at three shops and all three times I got my, my regular pay. I usually had a helper because that's the, that, that was a perk of the, of being a shop foreman is that you're training new help. And uh, I got a percentage of whatever the shop did. Right. So um, that was, that's just, that's just one thing. And by the way, that there, you will not get something like that being a career apprentice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like there's no one's going to, it doesn't matter how good you are. If at the end of the day, you can't sign a safety, right. A certification and be responsible for the work that you're doing. Okay. Cause that's what the license is. It's showing that you're responsible for the work you're doing. What do you say towards people who have found themselves in a position where they were lucky enough to be employed without the certification? Well, that's good. Um, there's, there's, there's a couple of things that, that you do have to understand. Number one, the, 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 the provincial governments all across the country, they're cracking down on guys that are, that are working, uh, that are working like that. Okay, but let's say for the sake of argument, you fall through the cracks. All right, and nobody, nobody's the wiser. All right, number two, you're stuck at that job. All right, like he might be paying you 80 grand a year because you're the best mechanic that he's ever had, but that's it. That's the whole show. All right, if you want to open up your own business because you're, you're that good, you're going to have to pay somebody to be there with the paperwork that you need. Okay. And um, the, last, the last thing I'd say, why would you want to do that? You, you're probably good enough to pass the test. Just go write it. The worst, the worst thing that can happen to you if you write the test and you don't pass, you're going to be in the exact same spot that you're in already, right? So in my, in, in my eyes, there's no need for that, right? Like I would, I would attempt to write the test if I was in a position like that, Yeah. right? I, and the worst thing that could happen is that you don't pass, you're in the same position anyways. And then you can uh, go onto Ashton's website, take my class, and uh, I'll give you the missing pieces of the puzzle that you need to pass that test. 
So what's the difference between a gold seal and a red seal? And is there different restrictions between the both? Yes. Okay. So a gold seal, it's located on any type of certification. Even if you get an undergrad in a, in a university, your diploma has got a gold seal on it. All right. That's the, that's, that's just showing that you're certified. Yep. All right. So if you finish all three levels of, um, of the block program at your community college for your apprenticeship, you get a certificate of apprenticeship with a gold seal on it. All right. So with that said, we, we all understand what the gold seal is, right? It's on the bottom of the diploma and it says, yes, you did it, right? It's a, it's a type of notoriety, you could almost say, right? Making it legal. Um, the red seal that sits beside the gold seal on any trades license is a federal government seal. And it's got a serial number on it and it's recognized through all the provinces. Your okay. gold seal, is only recognized in the province that, that it's issued in. Understandable. Um, would you recommend Ashton College, aside from your um, amazing teaching, would you recommend the online uh, structure of things? And the Abs of Absolutely. It, I'm, not, I'm not talking just on the behalf of myself. I know the other instructors that are teaching the Red Seal uh, trades, and I've seen the support that uh, the marketing team and uh, the directors of education give to everybody, I, 100%, I would recommend National College, right? These are uh, the people that I've met there, they're, they're top notch, stellar, a stellar group of individuals. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter what your trade is. I would, I would recommend National College for the Red Seal program. Um, and I could, I could tell you, I've met the guys, they're great. Um, the, marketing, the marketing team, great. The, the directors of education that uh, every time I converse with them or I have to collaborate with them for uh, for anything they give the uh, they give the utmost support and um, let's say that you're I'm going to give you an example of um, Ashton um, let's say that you're in my class and I'm finding out that uh, you had an undiagnosed learning disability where you cannot complete a 125 question multiple choice test for to get your license you can't get past question 60 in the first it, within an hour and i'm doing this because i'm measuring your knowledge and i'm measuring your retention right as well as training you to write this test i've diagnosed you with this by the way i can do that i do have a teachable in special education all right i'm just and and i'm and i'm serious about this i'm not just talking all right i approach ashton and i say this individual has uh has, has uh, some type of learning disability. We should really recommend them to get, um, to get uh, an accommodation when they write the exam. Guess what? Ashton's gonna back you as a student, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna back you. I'm gonna write it down, Ashton's gonna back you and you're gonna get, your, you're gonna get where you need to go. That's great, that's great. They support throughout the whole college, it's throughout um, the directors, uh, instructors. Yeah everyone that's really yeah. good. finally what advice would you give people who are thinking about taking the program but are a little bit hesitant to you're investing in yourself i don't know what you're hesitant about because if you were confident enough to write the test you would have already done it okay you're investing in yourself and, I, and i'll be the first one to tell you if you think you could pass the test go write it if you're having a problem with that where you don't feel good about it enroll in Ashton College. There's no such thing as a, a waste of money or a waste of an education. I've never heard that in my life. I've heard of people regretting not doing it, all right, and not doing it sooner. Definitely. I want to thank you for your time and having this conversation with me. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure that uh, to have it with you.